2 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, we're going to look at verse 21 in a second. All right, amen. It's good to be saved. It's good to be in church. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Now, before we get to verse 21, basically chapter 4 here is uh, kind of uh, the Apostle Paul's swan song. Uh, it's his last words uh, to his son in the faith, uh, Timothy, uh, before the apostle. He's in jail before he gets his head cut off. Uh, Paul's admonition here in 2 Timothy chapter 4 is very short, but it contains some very practical uh, advice. Now, chapter 4, he goes through a list of people, some of whom have, uh, have done good to him, some have done bad to him. He's given him uh, some instructions here. We don't have to read the whole chapter, but that's what's going on. And in verse 21, he says to Timothy, he says, Do thy diligence to come uh, before winter. Uh, Eubulus greeted thee, and Prudence and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, again, uh, thank you for today, Lord. And Lord, we ask you to bless the message. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the, you know, the, 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 you know, what Paul is asking Timothy to come, it's really a twofold thing. One, is that Paul probably knows that he's going to die soon, and it'd be nice to see Timothy perhaps one more time. And the second thing is, winter's coming. And, uh, you know, he's, te he's telling Timothy, he says, hey, uh, do thy diligence to come before winter. All right, now, uh, Dr. Luke, writing in Acts chapter 27, verse 12, says that because the haven was not commodious to winter, uh, in the more part advised to, to depart thence also. And if any means, uh, they might attain to Phoenix, uh, there to winter, which is in Haven and Crete, and lie toward the southwest and northwest. Uh, Paul is telling Timothy uh, that if he's going to see him before Nero cuts off his head, he'd get, her bed, get, get there before uh, winter sets in, or it's not likely that he's going to make it. Now, I've preached on this uh, passage before. It's a, it's a familiar passage that I've preached in my ministry, and the reason what I do is I try to work this message in the week after Thanksgiving and really, you know, right before we get into the Advent Christmas season. You say, why? Well, uh, winter is coming upon us, all right? Uh, it's been nice, you know, the uh, past week, but two weeks ago it was a little, a little chilly. And they say next week's going to be nice, and next thing you know we're going to have a foot of snow, and it's going to be 10 degrees, and we're all, well, I'm going to be happy, but most of you guys will be miserable because a lot of us don't like uh, the winter. Uh, the idea of the text here as applied to us believers is that there are certain things that can't be done uh, when it becomes too late. There's some things you had better do uh, while you can uh, because the time is coming when you won't be able to do them. Paul's telling the young minister to do thy diligence. Make sure you get it done. Why? Winter's coming. Uh, there's some things that can't be done uh, when winter comes upon us. How many people have uh, in-ground sprinklers? Okay, uh, we do. Okay, and what happens? You, 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 better, you better blow out the, the zones now because once winter sets in, the pipes burst, and then you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, uh, what happens? Uh, well, you know, someone's got to be careful, but around uh, home heating oil, around five, six dollars a gallon, I mean... I don't know if you've got to start making little bonfires in the house or, or what, but if you don't fill up that oil tank, uh, what's going to happen? Yeah, you're not going to get any heat? Uh, how many people like to take a cold shower in winter? Well, no, you, yeah, you want that hot water, so you better get, you better get that oil. All right? You've got to make so, sure that the snowblower is tuned. It's got fresh gas, and it runs before uh, the first time it snows. This happened one year. Um, you know, I went to start it up, it wouldn't start, it wouldn't start, and I, and I took it to my mechanic. He says, well, you didn't empty all the gas. He said, you still left a little, and that bad gas, you know, clogged up the carburetor. And, you know, luckily I got it, I always run, try to run it before the snow season hits. Um, it's flu season, okay? Um, and it's this coronavirus thing. In fact, everybody, in anybody, it's, it seems like whoever you talk to, whether they're in California, Florida, New York, your neighbor, everyone seems to be catching a cold, but it's flu season. Uh, they say that 
Um, this year, probably, you know, 2022 into 2023, it's going to be miserable. You say, why? Uh, a lot of people have said, well, I got my two shots, and I'm good, and I'm not going to get the virus. Okay? And then some people are like, well, you know what? Last year, flu season wasn't that bad. Okay? And what's happening? <laughs> no one's getting their flu shot. No one's getting their booster shot. Uh, me and my wife, uh, we went out to a restaurant for Thanksgiving. They had a little turkey thing. And they had two rooms. One was the big room, and the other was the small room. And we're walking in, and I'm like, well, I want the small room because they got the fireplace. It doesn't look too crowded. The big room is just a bunch of New Yorkers. <laughs> yeah, 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 turkey, turkey, yak, yak, talkity, talk. I says, oh, man, this is bad. But we got the small room. And a lot of people are just saying, hey, this, this virus, coronavirus thing is over. And uh, listen, winter's coming. You better, um, I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I get my flu shot every year. I got the two shots. I got to go in for the booster. And, uh, and you, everyone has their own opinion. So I'm, like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm just, I, it works for me. And I know some people are, are against that. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not here to debate that. But winter's coming. Be careful, all right? It, whether it's the flu, a common cold, the virus, now they're saying this new, kind of new thing, a respiratory thing that's uh, infecting children and stuff. And anyway, uh, two uh, world famous dictators found out the hard way about war and winter. Uh, both of these dictators wanted to rule all of Europe. And both Napoleon and Hitler attacked Russia in June. That's too late to attack. And if you can't take the whole country in four months, you are not getting back. And you'll be caught in the middle of a Russian winter where it could get down to minus 45 degrees. And back in those days, they didn't have heated this, that, and the other things. And a lot of men died just from common frostbite and the cold. Uh, both Napoleon and Hitler could not win uh, the Winter War. Uh, speaking of Russia and the winter, uh, you know, we got the war going on in, in Russia and uh, Ukraine. Uh, do you know what Russia's war strategy is now? Over the, over the spring and the summer, they tried to do offenses, and they would target civilians, and they tried to take some land, and then Ukraine would fight back, and it looked like there was a, you know, going back and forth, and Ukraine was uh, getting some land back. And you know what Russia's doing now? They're not really attacking civilians. They're targeting energy stations, oil depots, coal depots, uh, knocking out the electric grid. You say, why? Uh, well, here it's, it's 50 degrees, over there it's 25 and 30 degrees, and they say there's 9 million people in Ukraine without heat right now. So uh, the hopes of Ukraine winning, it, 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 you know, it's, it's a good strategy. If you can make 9 or 10, 10 million people miserable and cold and they start dying, that, won't, that might force the two sides to a some sort of peace agreement or, or ending the war, but that's what Russia's strategy is. Knock out the grid, all right? Um, anybody ever, you know, when Sandy hit, well, that was in November, the weather was kind of okay, but anyone have ever go to a couple of days without heat in the winter? Whether you ran out of oil or a snowstorm knocked in, it, it's not fun. All right, and Paul's words here are, are an admonition to us to do certain things uh, while we are able to do them. And if you don't, you may never get a chance because it will be too late. Uh, the winter of life is going to set over you, your soul, and the things that you plan, uh, you won't get a chance to carry them out. Why? Because you could be snowbound. Right? Winter's rough. You can't always travel around. Uh, you, it's funny. They say they canceled, I think, 45,000 flights over the summer. That was just nice weather. Wait, wait till it starts snowing. Right? You, can't, you can't travel. You can't get a chance to carry out the plans that you wanted to do before the winter of life uh, set in. There are things that should be done when they're young, because when you're old, it may be too late. And there are some things that you can still do, still do while you're uh, old, because you still have some time left in your life. And this morning, we're going to look at a few things that we need to do before the winter of life sets in on each and every one of us. Right, one thing we need to do before winter sets in is that we should form good habits. All right? While you're in the springtime of life, all right, you should be forming those good habits. All right? How about cleaning habits? How about living uh, like living a clean life before God? 
At 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness uh, and the fear of God. Right? Some of us, uh, you know, it's called holy living, living clean before the Lord. And what happens is that if you were brought up in the church and, and you lived a godly life, you, you've probably experienced holy living your whole life. But some people, they get saved later on in life. They may be in their 50s and 60s and what, 70s. And what has happened is that the unholy living has taken its toll. The smoking, the drinking, the partying, taking drugs, uh, over you know, overdoing it. Right? Uh, that, that'll, that'll put a big hurt on your body. And when you finally get a chance to retire, finally get a chance to maybe travel and see the world or, or get to spend more time with the kids, the grandkids, what happens? Your, your, your body says no. Your head says yes, but your, your, feet can't, your feet can't walk the way they used to walk. Another good habit we should be forming is how about good reading habits. Uh, Paul also told Tim Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, he said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, one thing I do plan on this winter, during the winter, not before winter, but uh, I like to read, you know, books during the winter. Uh, my son bought me a book that I'll probably be reading over the winter. It's not a religious book. It's a, it's a biography of someone that I admire. And, uh, you know, hey, I, don't, I don't work. I don't do landscaping. I don't do snow removal. I come here to church once in a while. I have some free time. So I like to read a little book. All right, but we should also be reading the good book. All right, the Holy Bible. And that's something some people have actually asked me about. And uh, it, we may do some sort of challenge and uh, if you read your Bible during 2023, there's some churches, they give out little pins and stuff for doing that. And I think we're, we're going to do that. I want to see it's each reading our Bibles. All right. How about good walking habits? Um, you know, my, my wife, uh, she says, man, I really want to get out and get, you know, she likes to walk every day. But a couple of, couple of days last week, she wasn't feeling well. And, and you know, now she's back to health and everything. Uh, and she wants to go out walking more. Walking is good for you. The fresh air, the exercise, and seeing nature, just getting out and stretching. All right, uh, who likes to be stuck in a house? They call it cabin fever, you know? <laughs> but uh, John writes in 3 John 1, 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And as a pastor, I want to see myself, and I want to see you guys, and I will get joy when I see you walking in truth. When someone says, Pastor, Pastor, I handed out a Bible to a friend. I'm like, praise God. Pastor, Pastor, I invited a friend to church. They're actually going to come. Praise God. Pastor, Pastor, I took some of those reading materials off the back table and handed it out to some friends. Praise God. Pastor, you prayed for my, my, my parent or my, my friend, and, and they're healed. Praise God. All right. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. How about good speaking habits? 1 Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived, evil communication corrupts good manners. This is something that I, that I uh, learned a long time ago, and this, this works, I, I guarantee this. All right? um, it, it's, I think it's in Proverbs where you say, um, kindness turns away wrath, or love turns away wrath. Okay, if you're arguing with someone, yeah, it's easy to just, you know, strangle them back, punch them in the nose, kick them in the pants, and fight with them. But that doesn't work anymore. Someone argues with you, say something bad, show a little kindness and love. Well, I, I'm, I know you're mad at me, but let's try to work it out. And uh, I love you in the Lord, or, uh, you know, you're my friend. And they, they, they'll be surprised. And next thing you know, you've won the conversation because you did it with love instead of fighting back the same way they do. Again, going back to uh, living holy, how about the good healthy habits? Avoiding drugs, smoking, drugs, drinking, sexual immorality. All right, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know ye not that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of yourselves? We have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What comes in? Uh, often goes out. And if you're taking in the things of God, that's a good thing. And if you're taking in the things of the world, uh, you're, you're in trouble. How about good tithing habits? Right? You guys know I don't like to talk about money that much. Uh, I wish, you know, the, the giving would increase. We're a small church, I know that. 
But Deuteronomy 14, 12 says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that, all, that the field bringeth forth year by year. All right? The, the, you know, until the Lord returns, we need to be supporting the church. We need to be reaching the community. We need to send out the gospel. And, you know, we do that uh, by, by the, the, the tithes that we collect. How about good prayer habits? All right, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. One of the shortest verses in the Bible. Prayer doesn't cost anything, but prayer can accomplish sometimes more than what your, your money is, is doing. I mean, it's good to pay the pastor, it's good to, you know, support missions, it's good to buy, you know, things, Bibles and stuff, but sometimes it's an old-fashioned getting on down on your knees and praying can do a lot. All right? Another good habit to, to form is, is faithful church attendance, and that's probably my little uh, hobby horse, if you want to call it, but uh, I, believe, I believe that God blesses people that come to church faithfully. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much uh, the more as ye see the day approaching. All right? Uh, and church attendance is very important. When you disappear for a few weeks, we miss you. We want to make sure you're okay. All right? We, we need to be consistent in our church attendance. Listen, I know people get sick. People have vacations. Uh, I get that. Let me give you a little tip. This is something me and my wife do. And uh, is when we go on vacation, we say two weeks. But what, what we do is we leave Monday morning. Like say we go to Florida. And then we're in Florida. We're in that Sunday. Okay? And we go to church when we're there. And we always come back on Friday or Saturday. That's two weeks of vacation, you know, maybe 13 days instead of 14, but we only missed one Sunday. I know some people, they go two weeks, it's they leave a uh, Saturday, they miss that Sunday, they miss the following Sunday, <laughs> and they're like, I mean, listen, someday you gotta stand before God. And also, I believe that God blesses people that, that honor him. You say, you know what, God? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go on my vacation for 13 days instead of 14 days, and I'm gonna make church that day. And you know what? I believe God will bless you for that. Right? We need to fill our lives with good uh, Bible habits. Do thy diligence before winter comes. Secondly, before winter sets in, uh, you should show kindness uh, to the loved ones while you can. Right? Second Peter chapter one verse seven. It says, and, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Right? Your loved ones are not going to be around forever. All right? Sooner or later, uh, it's either... You're heading to the grave, or they're heading to the grave. And I know some of you's got a contest with some of the ones you don't talk to in your family. Oh, I'm hoping they die first, <laughs> you know? And it should not be like that. You should show some kindness while you still have a chance. Has anyone ever been to a funeral, and you knew the family member, you knew the person, and maybe you had a conflict, and you didn't see them in two or three years, and you stand there saying, you don't feel, you don't feel bad for them, you feel bad for yourself because you knew that you you held some bitterness in your heart. You should, have, you should have got right with that person before they moved on to glory. It's not always about them. Sometimes it's about us. And, I, I, you know, we can raise hands. How many people got some conflict with some family members? I, I do. Well, you know, I... I, 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 I yeah, all right. I, I, all right, let's move on. But we all... Yeah, I know, my, my wife has. My wife has the best family. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, my wife's <coughs> sisters and brother-in-laws, we always get together, nobody fights, great time. You get two or three Andersons together, they, they uh, 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 mm -hmm. it's either nobody talks or everybody starts drinking and then everybody starts fighting and then nobody talks to nobody for five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that not true? true? Yeah, it's true. I'm talking to my brother and sister a little bit lately. Why? Because my dad is in ser serious health. And then I do... <laughs> You know, what's, they're not doing a thing. I've been on the phone all week. My dad, a caretaker, a cleaning service, and my brother and sister like, Aah. and my dad's like, how much, how much? I don't want to pay. I'm like, Dad, you're a filthy, dirty, old, smelly, stinky man. All right? 
You got a dog, you don't open the windows. I, I mean, you walk in there and it's like, whew, old man smell. We all know that. But we got to show kindness. Uh, you got to show kindness to your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your wife, your husband, your children. That's probably, of all the things, and I've told my wife this, my brother and sister, I, I've tried my best. I, I, I can stand before God, I've invited them to my house, I've tried, I said, I never want to fight with my kids. Even if they call me bad names or something stupid, I, that's where I'm just going to be like, in one ear, out the next. I mean, I, we got two good boys. I'll, 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 I'll be, my son just got promoted to chief in the Navy. My other son's a doctor, a pharmacist. And we got grandbabies. Nobody fights. Everyone gets along. We get to see everyone two weeks ago. I said, I never want to be separated from my kids. I don't want to be in any kind of like family situation with my kids. We never want to have regret. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, not winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a friend, a child, or a parent. So said former First Lady Barbara Bush. Do it while you can. All right? Sometimes we got to pick up the phone first. I know it's hard. All right? But sometimes we got to do it. All right, there's something else that you need to do before it becomes too late. You need to teach and disciple your children while you can. Now, we have an older congregation here, but praise <coughs> God that, um, you know, lately, this past year, we've, we've seen some uh, young kids attend church. They're in the back there, and, and uh, you know, we have some young people in our church, and that's, a, and that's a good thing. But you need to disciple, yeah, amen, you need to disciple your children. Uh, while you can. You say, why? Once they become teenagers, they're probably not going to listen to you. And when they get to, to become a certain age, they'll consider themselves adults and they think that they're smarter uh, than you. So if you have a, an influence over your children, then please take advantage of it. Get them in church. Disciple them. Uh, share the Bible. Share the gospel. Share what God would want to have them uh, to do in their lives. The teen years are usually too late to form these good habits. A child's character is fixed, usually before they are five years old. So between five and 12, you're like rolling the dice with a kid, but if you got them young, you can, you can keep for the Lord, but if they're a teenager, it, 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 it all, it's just all statistics, all right? How, how many 18-year-old, 17-year-old kids are like, yeah, I wanna go to church? It's sad, that's the generation we live in, all right? Uh, the CDC reports an average of uh, 48 children between the ages of 10 and four are murdered in the United States each year. That's about 13, uh, people, 13 young people lost every day. Every day, we hear it out, out in the city. Uh, this one's sitting on the stoop and they get shot. This one's uh, just playing basketball and they get shot. We got it here in Long Island in Brentwood. Uh, we got this MS-13 gang stuff and they're shooting each other and they're hacking each other with machetes. And these are kids, they're not adults. All right? MS-13 gang related. Uh, you know, when I was in the NYPD, we had to deal with this stuff. 90% of all smokers be be uh, began smoking before the age of 21. All right, about 30% of all teen smokers will continue smoking and die an early uh, death from smoking-related diseases. And who often gave uh, a smoker their first cigarette? It was their best friends. It was their little, you know, little child buddies. All right, was, you know, it's just, it's just sadly the way it is. And according to the Surgeon General, teenagers who smoke are now likely to use alcohol, eight times more likely to smoke marijuana, and oh boy, wait till they, you know, they're, they're legalizing all of this stuff and supposedly next week uh, these marijuana shops are gonna be open up in New York and you're gonna see lines out the door. And you say, come on, pastor, you know, I, I smoked a little pot once in a while, I think it's okay. Listen, uh, a personal person that does it in their own house, you know, and all that, that's, that's for debate. You know what's gonna happen? Everyone's gonna be drinking and driving, now they're gonna be smoking doobies and driving. And you can smell the smoke and the goofy face and everything, and it's bad. And let me tell you about this stuff that's vaping, all right? Vaping is just as bad. You see these little metal cantanisters and stuff? 
That stuff is just as big. You say, well, it's not doesn't have the nicotine and uh, the tobacco. It has other unknown chemicals, and when you vape, you're actually su you're using more strength for your lungs to suck the vape stuff in. All right? That stuff that stuff will kill you. Guess which country has the highest uh, teen birth rates? United States. Guess which country has the highest dropout rate in, in the modern in, you know modern uh, world? Right? United States. Suicide is the third leading cause of death uh, to 15 to 24 year olds in the United States. Uh, kids are playing this game called the knockout game. Anyone ever hear the knockout game? Yeah, the knockout game is when you're just a regular person, you're walking down the street, you're going to the bakery, or you're going to the bank, and they come from behind you and they knock you out. One guy punches you, the other guy is filming it on the phone, and then they put it on, on YouTube and, and Facebook, and, <laughs> and a couple of people actually die from that. And these are kids. And what I say is, what about the kids? And I say, what about the parents? Uh, what about the parents? I, you know, I don't even know if they have this. Back in the day, if a kid said, did something bad, the parents had to pay for it. All right? Remember? We broke a window playing baseball, Brother Don. What happened? Dad would have to pay, and then we'd get our butts spanked, and, you know, and then we'd have to rake leaves for the next 10 years paying that window off. Nowadays, all this crime and stuff happens. Where's the parents? I bet you they put some law in saying if your, kid, if your kid's under 18 and he commits a crime, the parents have to pay restitution. I think some parents get back into the, into the parenting game, you know? I know some of us anguish over our children and grandchildren, all right? They may be good, they may be pure, and, and, but you wanna know something? Their friends, the, the neighborhood, uh, they may be running with the world. And they may be running with the devil, and the world and the things of the world appeals to children. All right? And you might be saying, well, what can I do? My kids are already grown up. They won't listen. All right? You keep praying. All right? you, want your, you want something? Like the Lord saving your child, a grandchild? And get on your knees and pray. Lord, save my children. Lord, save my grandchildren. Daniel 9, 3 says, And I set my face upon the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication uh, and with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I mean, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta take off your clothes, put on that potato bag and sprinkle your face with ashes and get on your knees and pray. And pray earnestly. Jesus said in Mark 9, 29, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Sometimes we throw up the little prayers, oh God help me. It, it, it's not gonna work. Sometimes the only thing that's going to work is heavy-duty prayer and, and fasting. You say, what about the grandbabies? You win them to the Lord. <clears throat> Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of a sinner is laid up for the just. Isn't that good? And we all want to leave something for our kids, but a godly mom and dad actually think of the grandbabies. All right? You say, I don't have any kids. I don't have any grandbabies. Uh, maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're an aunt, maybe you're an uncle, uh, you, you know, maybe you have some, you, some kind of godly influence. You could be that godly influence in their lives. Right? There's something else you'd better do while you can, and while you're still breathing and still have your senses about you, you better thank God for your health while you still have it. You have a good pair of legs, thank God for them. And what's connected to the leg bone? The foot bone. Right? You ever think... Uh, God, for your, your foot bone, your leg bone, your knee bone, all right? You got a good pair of legs, thank God for them, all right? What about those eyes and ears, all right? You can still read, you can still see, you can still hear, all right? Thank God for them. Thank God that you have your senses, and thank God you can still do these things before the winter of life sets in. We thank God for our spiritual health. We should thank God for our emotional health and spiritual health as well. It's great to feel joy, love, happiness, peace, praise, and goodness. And these things all come from God and they come from the, the good people around us. And we ought to thank God for our good health all around. David wrote in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord thy God, O my soul, <clears throat> and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, <clears throat> who healeth all thy diseases, who rendereth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God's the one that can heal all the diseases, and God's the one that can keep you strong. Uh, something else you should do before winter sets in is to forgive someone who has wronged you. All right, we talked a little bit about this, but are you bitter or angry at someone about something? All right, the best way to do about it is to pray and to get rid of those things and to get right with people. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you of your trespasses. Isn't that interesting? I'm not going to forgive, you know, I'm not going to forgive Larry, man, because he stepped on my toe in the, in the, in the lunchroom. I'm not going to forgive you, man. And then I say, oh, God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. God says, well, you're not going to forgive Larry, so you, you're not going to forgive old brother Hank. You know, I'm only teasing with you, Larry. So we got, we got to forgive people that have done us wrong. All right? This has nothing to do with salvation, but an unforgiving spirit can affect your fellowship with uh, man, kind, it can affect your fellowship with God, it can affect God's blessings on your life, it can affect your friendships, your relationships, and your rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. You had better apologize to whom it is due, and you had better forgive those who have wronged you. And you say, Pastor, what if somebody has not apologized to me? I've had this asked before. Pastor, um, if someone has not apologized to me, can I forgive them? Absolutely. God, brother so-and-so did that to me. You know what? It's, I, I forgive him. It's water under the bridge. It's, uh, your blood has uh, you know, washed that sin away, and I pray that they get right, and, and that's it. C.S. Lewis used to say, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has uh, forgiven the inexcusable in you. All right. Paul commands us Christians in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 31, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. All right? With all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. This is about the third book of Bible verse that we've read where we see God. God's saying, you better forgive and love and do all the right things because I've forgiven you, so you had better forgive them. All right. According to a recent article from the Mayo Clinic, it's titled, What are the Benefits of Forgiving Someone? Uh, letting go of grudges and bitterness can make way for compassion, kindness, and peace. Uh, your relationships, greater spiritual and psychological well-being, less anxiety, stress, and hospitality, lower blood pressure, fewer symptom, symptoms of depression, and lower risk of substance abuse. Well, there's a benefit of, of forgiving and just kind of letting the thing go. All right? Another thing we ought to do while we have the chance uh, is an opportunity to do the Lord's work. All right? James 1.22 says, but be ye doers of the word, not just hearers only, deceiving your own self. Uh, there's a many a people that say, I wish I could do something for the Lord, or I want to do something for the Lord, or I don't, I don't know how to go about it. Well, if, if you want to do something to the Lord, just approach me sometime or call me and say, Pastor, I'm interested in serving the church. What can I do? And I'm not going to, and what, what a pastor should not do is say, well, I need this, this, and this. What a good pastor will say is, what are some talents that you have? What are some things that, are you, that you're interested in? What is something that, that you feel like you're good at? And then you can then throw out some of the other op opportunities. There, there are some people that can do things that I can't do that, that they're just, they wish they could do, but they don't know how to go about it. They said, approach me, approach one of our deacons, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you in a ministry, and we'll get you to help out. All right? All right? Be doers of the word. All right? All right, and lastly, uh, another thing you ought to do while you still have a chance before the winter of life sets in, is to stock up on uh, those provisions that'll get you through the winter itself. All right? Now, you've seen your saints. You know this. If you're like under, I don't know, if you're under 50, probably I have no idea what I'm about to talk about, but if you're a senior saint, 
Uh, you know what canning is, right? You know what canning is, okay. I mean, we, we go to the supermarket and we buy it in a can. But back in the day, uh, canning was you took the fruits and you took the vegetables that you had produced and that you had grown on your property and you, had, you bought the little aluminum cans and you sealed it up and you put that food in and you preserved it, you put it in the basement and what would happen? You'd have food throughout, throughout the whole winter. Our generation is in trouble. You say, why? Every time it snows, you go to Stop and Shop, what happens? Five million cars in Stop and Shop. You can't buy milk, you can't buy bread, you can't buy steak, you can't even buy spaghetti. Why? Because everybody panic shops. Nobody cans anymore. I, 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 maybe I'm going to start canning. I don't know. I'm going to can pretzels and <laughs> pizza and uh, forget about the vegetables and fruit. But, you know, that's why every time it rains, it snows, it's, oh, man, stop and chop some manhouse. Now I know why my wife, she goes to Costco, she buys nine milks, 12 blueberries. You never know. A snowstorm might be, a, might be a coming. All right. We need to stock up on the provisions that will get us through the, through the winter of life. Right, what are some provisions that can get you through the winter? Obviously, the physical food, but how about some spiritual things? All right, get yourself a good Bible. Um, in fact, I, I recommend that every believer should have at least two or three Bibles. Not different versions. I'm a, I'm a King James guy, you know that. But when you get a Bible that's just the Bible itself, no notes, just that's good for reading, then you get yourself a reference Bible. That's what I have. It's called the Schofield Reference Bible. And what it does is it has notes, tries to explain some of the harder verses that tell you what's going on. Now remember, the notes itself are not inspired, but they, tr they try to be a little help. Uh, now you, got, um, you get some large print Bibles, you know, for some uh, people with, with reading needs. Uh, get yourself a concordance, a prayer journal, a notebook, get yourself some pens. Uh, also, if you enjoy computers and stuff, a lot of these things can now be found on a computer. So get yourself a computer. I, I can't believe it, but I still hear preachers that, that still preach against computers. I'm from the devil. It's wicked. And I had all my, you know, Microsoft and I had Bill Gates. I, all right, yeah, Bill Gates might be from the devil, but, <laughs> you know, you, you, it's like the computer's like a good steak. You eat the meat, you throw out the bones, all right? There's some good computer sites where you can well, watch a good church sermon. Uh, there's, listen, there's some pastors that I like to watch and listen um, and because uh, every pastor is different and everyone pastor is unique and I like to get some tips and I like to I like to be preached to I my wife knows I listen to I listen to thousands of sermons I've got thousands of cassettes I'm, I'm constantly into that all right so stock up all right Paul said in 2nd Timothy 4 13 he said here you know a couple of verses before he said the cloak that I left at Troas uh, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. All right? So Paul's telling Timothy, bring my, my, my cloak. All right? Let me check the time here. All right, I'll put the pizza guys here. Right, the cloak. Winter's coming. Timothy, bring my, bring my winter jacket. All right? Bring with me the books. All right? Paul was a, a learned study man. The parchments. Probably... Uh, uh, the Old Testament and the new and what was written therein at the at the at the at the New Testament at the present time, Paul was stocking up. All right, the cloak, his coat, the books, his study materials. All right, the parchments, the Bible and the, and the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're going to close our message now, and I just want to say that hey, don't be deceived. I know it's. You know, yesterday, 55 degrees, running around in the t-shirt and raking up leaves. I'm sweating, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm wow, this is nice. Winter's not coming. You, you wait. Winter's coming. It, it always comes. We, we live in New York. We, we don't, we don't live in the Philippines where it's like 85 and sunny, right, Mom? You know, we don't live in the Caribbean, and you know, they were about maybe too hot. But here, winter's coming. So be ready, church. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. All right. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to offer up a short prayer. And let me just turn up my camera here.